But assuming I want you to learn something about this chart. Um, so I'm going to highlight this. I want you to pick a lesson here. I'm going to highlight this. Go to developer tab and then click on. OK, uh, before doing that, I'm going to click on. I'm going to record my macro and then I'm going to call this. Uh, let's say. Mac, let's just call it charts. OK. Charts. And no, I just don't want to use a shortcut key, no description, whatever. I leave it like that. And then I go to insert and then click on column chart. And maybe I want to choose, uh, let's see, I want to choose this. All right. And then I want to go back to my macro recorder. And then I'm going to stop the recording. Now, watch and see. Remember what we did? We highlighted, right? We record macro, recorded a macro. We inserted a chart. So if you want to see code for this particular chart, open. Uh, B, BBA and uh, this workbook again. There are so many workbooks here that I, I don't even know the one I need to show you. Uh, so this, check that this workbook up. So that is what. I didn't name some of these things. Help this workbook. All right. Yeah, All right. this is it. Module two. This is the this is everything that we did. Okay. This is everything we did. Remember, we call it charts. That is the name of our charts. So you can now see that it's giving us a name. Sub charts. If I want to change the name of that macro, I can remove sub charts and put something else, maybe like uh chart chart in x okay and then the name is going to change if you check here you are going to see that the name has changed chart in x okay and then um these are all comments i can choose to remove all the comments and then what do you have this is the code what did we do? Active chart, active, active sheet dot shapes dot add chart dot select. Remember, we selected the charts yeah, yeah. inside, inside an active sheet. And what did we do? Inside the active chart, we changed the chart type to be what XL cylinder column cluster. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. And then the next line of code is showing us is that we have an active chart and we set our source data to be source. And then the range is sheet two. Remember this range data is actually in sheet number two. If you go to sheet number one, what we have in sheet number one, you are going to check your module one. Uh, no, that's not it. Yes, remember this one when we try to add a chart. Remember the first the first uh, graph we brought in. So all of that has appeared. And then remember this book one, module one. So all of this is just like saying page one, page two, page three. All of these programming languages are just there for you to get to understand. So I thought that is just what I did for this particular one. So assuming we want to do something, we want to modify this particular chart. Okay. Let me go.
to my Excel, we want to modify this particular chart. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to my macro recorder. I'm going to, let me click outside. I'm going to click on record macro. And then I'm going to call it, let's say modify chart. Then I click on OK. When I click on OK, I'm going to click on my charts. I'm going, I'm going to rename the, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to rename my charts to be something else. I'm going to rename it to be, let's say, sales in uh, 2015. I'm going to change the color of this to, let me see, I'm going to change the color to this. Perfect. I'm going to, let's say I want to delete the grid lines. I, I've deleted the grid lines. And then I'm going to stop recording. Can you tell me the things I did now? I've the first, first I uh, yes, change the um, color of the uh, chart, the chart color. Uh huh. And remove the grid line. Exactly. So every action I perform right here actually have what is called a code, a programming code for it. So I'm going to go to my Visual Basic and can you see the programming code for every single thing I did? So that is why people respect programmers a lot because it's not easy. Programmers are the, are the human beings that know all of these lines of codes without actually performing the action itself. The programmer would put in all these codes, okay, and then run the code. And every single thing you ask the programmer to do is going to appear as a final work for the client. So you can see that those three steps we did. The first one changed the chart title. The second one was what? Um, change the coloring or the feel or whatever. And the third one was deleting the grid lines. Every single thing we did there, this is the line of code for it. So we can see the first one, chart number one, we activated it. We changed the chart title, we selected it, okay? And after that, we changed the chart title. You can see active chart dot chart title dot text. Remember when I told you that this is how to change the chart title, right? Remember when I told you about the inverted commas? that you, anything you want to put in that is not a part of the code, you need to bring it in in inverted commas, and in this case, sales in 2015, okay? So for any time you want to change a chart title in macros, always remember this line of code, active chart dot chart title dot text equals to the name of the chart title. And then we selected the format text, text frame, text range, characters, blah, 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 so this is the fuel, uh, a fuel visible, uh, fuel color, fuel transparency, italics, name. These are all the lines of code. And then we ended it with active chart, chart area, select, clear to master. So this is just how it works. If you want to change this chart title to something else, maybe sales in 20, uh, 2020. Sorry sales in 2020 and you come here and put sales in 2020 and you search in places where the code reflected sales okay that's it then you simply run your code and okay it's saying i need to debug Extra axis, X value, major grid line, selects, okay. So we probably would have to go back. It's saying it's an inv invalid parameter. So, but again, it actually changed sales in 2020. 
So everything we do on Microsoft Excel, if we want to actually automate and you know automate the tags, make it easier for us uh, to tell the next sheet what to do without us actually doing it. Save, we can save ourselves a lot of time. Then VBA is the way to go. Now, I, I noticed something just now that um, we have recorded two different markers here on this particular thing. You know, we recorded yeah. one initially that we stopped, then mm -hmm. the new one. Now, if I go to sheet three now and I want to run the markers, which of them will I run next? Okay, if you go to sheet three and you want to run the macros, I want to refer you to the uh, the video I just sent to you. That if you have a particular if you have a particular sheet here, remember when I was trying to uh, teach you how to highlight your cells. If you have for this particular one, you have your uh, control shift down, right? You remember and control shift yes. this one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So this is how to highlight your, this is how to highlight your data. If you ever want the chart to if have an effected change in the second sheet. So watch that video and if you have questions, you let me know. So when you go to the next sheet, you can, if because you want to have uh, sales in 20, you could just, if you had followed the highlighting part, you could just come to your, uh, your macros and choose the particular code you have. Of course, we are not looking at the uh, chart loop. We are not looking at codes in chart. These are all things I did today. You have to look for modify charts all right and then you run the code so once you run the code of course it's going to show error because there is no single thing here but when once you follow the processes i showed you and then you run the code if this was sales in 2025 or 2015 but once you follow the line of codes in the previous video it's going to get affected of almost instantaneously. So instead of having 2020, you have 2015, you go to the next sheet, you have 2016, and the values in that particular sheet is going to be affected as well. Wait, I don't get it. If, if, for instance, now that I, we change the chart title to sales in 2020, in uh -huh. sheet one, if the data set in sheet two is the sales for 2022, and I just run the macro. Will it take effect? Will our window is going to be two? Will it still reflect 2020? Yes, that is what I'm saying. If there is, there are different procedures for actually using macros to apply in multiple sheets with different data values. This one we treated now is the one that have a single data value. You can see I didn't need to play or run the macros in another sheet because I didn't have another, um, I didn't have another sheet. All I had was my quarter and sales. And then this one, I actually used it to explain how you can, you know, get to study the codes. But assuming I have sheet one and I, I want to follow the process and then I have sheet two and then I have sheet three with different data sets, there is a process that you can use, and that is what um, that is what is it's contained in the in the video I shared to you. So when you follow that process, if you go to sheet two and then click on um, your macros, and then you want to run your macros, let's say um, maybe add charts, and you want to run your macros, uh, of course it's still going to show me error, but you can see now that the first the first thing I did is actually gone and it has been replaced with another sheet. Do you, is it still confusing? I, I understand what you're saying, I'm talking to it. Yeah, all I'm saying is that there are different codes, there are different steps you need to take if you want to automate charts that have different uh, 
different values in different sheets. The same way we did when we're treating uh, VBA macros um, in the table and column section. The first time we treated it. 